All right, everybody, welcome back to My Classic Fords. I'm Gordon Best, and I got a little different video for you tonight. Um, we put the Jaguar aside for right now, just for a day or two. A couple people have asked me, you know, how do you finance these projects? Well, I'm gonna show you how I do it. It's pretty, well, it's pretty simple, really. It's just a lot of hard work. So what we have here, this is a plow bracket for like a payloader. Uh, belongs to a friend of mine. I'm trying to gear it up for his backhoe and What we got to work with we got a few scrap pieces of angle and He had a set of lugs burnt out on a table somewhere So we're gonna pin that onto his machine Or he's going to pin that on. We're just gonna build it for him All right, so the first thing I'm doing I know his lugs they have to fit in here and he gave me a measurement of 24 and a half. So his lugs go right, right here and right here. So I want that to be about 24 and 3 eighths. Right now it's 24 and 3 quarter. This is 3 eight plate. So 3 eight and 3 eighths, 3 quarter, 25 and 5 eighths inside. So we'll cut a piece now, sorry, 23 and 5 eighths. We'll cut a piece now to put in here. And I'm thinking I'll probably put an angle up here to hold this apart. Then I'm thinking we'll take the bigger angle, put it down here, put another piece up here, and then we'll simply weld his legs on. It's all about using what you got. All right, I got my angle cut. I cleaned up the corner of the ends a little bit. I cleaned this up a little bit. Pretty rusty material, but so I want this to go about here. I'm just kind of guessing where I'd like to have it. So I'm thinking this is gonna double, this is gonna double this angle up as well. We gotta leave enough room in here for the plow to pivot. So I'm looking at right about here. To me, it looks like a good spot. So we'll roughly measure that five and an eighth. We'll just make the side the same. That five and an eighth. All right, so now we'll stick that in. And what I'll do, I think I'll tack one side first and then I'll bring that side into it and tack it. All right, so what I'm looking at, I'm just trying to make this flush here. That side's cut a little different, but it won't matter. At the end of the day, we'll make it the same. What I'm using for welding wire, it's an 045 flux core. It does take a gas, it's not gasless. Um, the reason I use that, it's a really good all-purpose wire, it's all positioned. Just means for those of you that don't know, you can weld overhead, vertical, whatever you want with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna guess this off the pins. Best I can. Put an inch to the center of the pin, an inch to the center of the pin. This isn't very crucial, this is just a brace, but we want it to look somewhat respectable. Okay, so that should work pretty good. I had mentioned earlier that it was 24 and a half, um, but I went out and double checked the plow, and there's a shim that goes in each side of the lug. So I made this 24 now. That gives me a quarter inch on each side to shim. Okay, so we get that kind of tacked in. Looks about the same. All right, 
right, so what I got on the go here, I got a couple pieces of 3 8 square burner. I want to tack on the bottom. This was cut off of the torch off another piece. And I'd like to extend this out a little bit, so the best way to do that is just simply add a piece on. So we'll go ahead and tack them on. Alright, so what I'm looking at, I just want to make sure these are close to the same. We got, oh, roughly inch and three sixteenths inch and a quarter. That's pretty close. What you have to realize what we're doing with this, this is something that we're trying to get geared up real quick out of scrap that I have. So we're just going to do the best job that I can do with what I have to work with. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I want to put this 4x4 four four angle right on the bottom, just like that. And that's going to give us a nice base to mount our lugs on. I'm going to put another one up here. We can stick our lugs on. I think that's going to give us a really strong place to push. So what we need to do now, we need to get this centered. So we know that this is 24. And I cut this at 46. Half of 46 is 23. And then... Half of 24 is 12, so we'll just go 12 inches each way, just like that. Okay, so we know that those lines have the outside. Tight. So I'm just going to check to make sure that the pin hole is the same distance from the bottom of the angle on both sides. Not that it would be a big deal either way, but I do try to make things relatively the same. Two inches to the center. Geez, wouldn't you know? Two inches and two inches. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Now that that's tacked on, I'm going to go bring over a lug. We'll put a lug on where we think it needs to be, based off the dimensions I got off the machine. I'll find out where the other angle's gonna be, and then we'll put our lugs on. Okay, so what I'm looking at now is this lug is 21 inches. So I wanna put another angle up here, say about 22 inches. That gives me a little room to play with. I can mount these lugs on. So essentially that's gonna be like this. Look like that. I'm thinking what we're going to do, we're just going to cut a piece of angle, 11 inches and 11 inches. We'll bring it up here and stab it on. We'll put one across here just for strength, and then we'll stick our lugs on on top. All right, so what I'm up to now, I'm going to hold my square in here. I'm going to hold it flush with the angle down here. And I'm just going to run it up. I know I want 22 inches, so I'm going to mark it at 22. And then I know it's square off this line. So I know that's where my angle's going. So my angle goes right there. So I'll do the same thing three more times. Then we'll put a piece in here and a piece on each side.
essentially got this framed together. What we're going to do now, we're going to measure out for the lugs, and I'm going to show you how I do it. But essentially, these are going to go right here. Okay, here's the most critical part. Up until now, this is just framework to hold the lugs. Really not a big deal. Um, it just has to be sturdy enough to put your lugs on. Now that that's done, the most critical thing is where they're located. So, first things first, you find center. We already know that's the center down here. So we're going to mark that. And if your soapstone's not razor sharp, if you can't shave your face with it, it's not sharp enough. So, that's our center line. I just double checked the machine. And our outer lugs are 44 and a quarter. So that's 22 and an eighth each way. I always hold it just say on the 10. I never, I never use the end of the tape. It's too hard to judge. We'll hold it on the 10. What did I say? 22, 22 and an eighth. So we're going to go 32 and an eighth. Okay, and that's going to give us the inside of the outside lug. So we're going to mark that like that. So we'll go back to 32 and an eighth, then mark 10. And then a good way to double check, we know we want 44 and a quarter. So we'll hold it on the 10, should have 54 and a quarter, and that's exactly what it has. So I've marked out my outside lugs. Now that these are done, I'm going to mark out the inside lugs. 29 and 3 quarter. If it was 30, half of that would be 15. So 14 and 7 eighths. So we want 24 and 7 eighths off the 10. 24, 7 eighths, 24 and 7 eighths, and like I said, a good way to check, we know we want 29 and 3 quarter, so you should have 39 and 3 quarter, and that's exactly what I have. So that's a quick, easy way to do it, um, works really well, you know that you got it right. I just showed you how. Okay, so I'll transfer those lines up just by using a bigger square. So we'll transfer these up. here. Once I've established this as my square point, that's the way you should work off it. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't try to make another set of lines up there. It's more important to have your lugs, let's just say if they were all crooked a little bit, it would generally be okay. The plow's got a lot of play in it this way. It definitely has a lot of play in it this way. So say just for argument's sake, they were all out an eighth. Well, as long as they were all out together, within reason, it would be okay. But if you get your bottom out this way and your top out that way, and this one's this way and that one's that way, it's never going to line up for you. So that's why I do it that way. Um, and it's obviously, it's really hard to measure if you can't measure around. You can do the math, you can add it up. But we know it's right now. Okay, before I tack the lugs on, I'm going to cut these little ears off just for, just for looks and they're very sharp and I don't want them there. So I'm going to buzz those off now. Okay, so here's your next step. You want to find the center of the hole. So how I do that, I go right on the edge, 
make a mark, right on the edge, and make a mark. Now we just need to find the center between the two. Again, your soapstone has to be sharp. Don't try using a rock. What I do, I just pick any inch. Could be five, six, four, whatever, don't matter. I put it in the middle, and in this particular case, it's seven, eight, two, twenty. And that's center. Instead of, the alternative is, if you try to measure it, you say, well, it's one and three quarter, half of one and three quarter is blah, 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 blah. This way here, you just, instead of trying to do the math in your head, I find this way faster. Just take any number, put it in the center just by eye, and then just go each way the same. I find it just quick and easy. I'm not scared of the math, I just, whatever's quick and easier. So that's my center. So I'll do that in all four lugs. Then I'll put a, a little center line here. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is about two and a quarter up. So I know I want it up that way a little bit. So I'm going to go about two and five eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark right across here. And what that's going to do, when I put these on, if they're on the line, if they're on the line here, this center line's lined up, and it's on my line on both sides, then I know I've got to be really close. Now you want to lean it over just a touch. Because when you tack it, it's going to draw on you. And it's going to hinge towards the way you tack it. So I always lay it over just a touch, and then it'll come back, and then we'll square it up after. This is what we're up to. Like I said, you get that center line. That's going to go down and line up with that line. And then we got the line on this side. We line that up. And then we're going to double check, make sure it's square. And as you see, it's pretty dang close. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the other three exactly the same, and then we'll have another look. All right, guys, so all four lugs are on. Um, I just want to show you a couple more things before I let you go here. A couple of you guys are probably wondering, uh, you know, how you know, how do you know the pins are going to fit? And I'll show you exactly how I fit them. This isn't my first time doing this. I've done this many times. I've built many attachments. So let me show you kind of how you do it with no pins. Okay, so it's supposed to be seven and a quarter in between. So as you see, I got seven and a quarter. We'll measure up here, maybe seven, three sixteenths. And that's more than okay. That's in between three sixteenths and quarter. So that's more than okay. And I say that because it's almost impossible to get steel 100% exact. Like that's seven and a quarter there, seven and a quarter there. So I know that they're consistent all the way down. Um, now, here's the trick. We know 44 and a quarter comes from inside to inside. So we got 44 and a quarter. We know from there to there. 44, 5 sixteenths. Like I said, within a sixteenth, I'm calling it good. 29 and 3 quarter inside. So we're 13, 13 sixteenths. And we are 13 sixteenths. So that means this lug is in a 30 second. That lug's in a 30 second, which is more than okay because there's lots of shims in here. So we're not worried about that. 
The last thing I want to show you is how you line up your holes without a fit up pin. Just take a square, take your time, because if it's not perfect, they won't fit. Make sure you're holding it tight right to your lug and then run it into the holes. Make sure that it's in the center. You know, you don't want it tipped either way. But what you want to do is make sure that it's tight right across, okay? As well as we did mark the center line. I showed you how I done that, okay? So we did mark those. So we know they were close to start with, but that's how I do it. I just put a square in the holes and take your time, be patient. The other thing you gotta do is make sure that these are nice and square, okay? So make sure you got these as square as you can make them, okay? If you've got those lugs squared up this way, you got your right dimensions. If the pinholes line up, you know you're all right. All right, guys, well, thanks a lot for watching. Um, what I got left to do on this little project here, I'm gonna run an angle in here to out here to stiffen this up. Because if you look, the machine's gonna be pushing just on those angles. They are very rugged angles, but we wanna make sure that it has lots to push on. So we're gonna run a brace into it. And then I think that'll be more than enough. Same thing on this side. Like I said, usually when I make something like this, I make it out of new material. Um, the gentleman that I'm doing this for, it's a project that he wants done ASAP in case it snows. He gave me some scrap to work with and he had these lugs made somewhere. So that's the story on it. Like I said, it kind of just helps pays the bills for working on cars like this. So if you're new to the channel, this is typically what we're doing. We're working on a Jag and we cut it in half and shortened it. All right guys, well thanks a lot for watching. Um, I have lots of welding to do on this and some braces to do. I'm not gonna bother filming that. Um, when I'm done with that, we'll get back to the Jag.